Cacio e Pepe. Pecorino is a sheep's milk cheese. <laughs> but me and him, we get along. They have a lot of different sizes of spaghetti. So some are thinner, some are thicker. Yes. Uh, you might want to go for the thicker one. I've just... Yes. Yes! This is going to be a great video. We're reacting to a cacio e pepe made by Steven from Not Another Cooking Show. I love this channel, I love the way this guy makes his video, and I hope I get to meet him one day. Let's watch it together. Yeah, that looks beautiful. It looks creamy, full of pepper, like lots of pepper. Nice, nice pasta. And it's served on a chopping, on a chopping board. Wow. Weird and just, it's just strange. Nice and simple ingredients. I didn't see cream there. Yeah, nice. Beautiful. Yeah, I think we make the cashew pepper the same way. Can't wait to watch it. Beautiful. Beautiful footage. Yeah, nice. Beautiful. Today we're making one of the most requested dishes that I get. A classic Roman Italian dish. It's Simple as hell. It's a little simplicity at its best. A little bit tricky to do, but if you can do, do it's tricky. Could be hard, I agree. But if you follow the steps, you should be okay. Let's go through this. And I think we'll get together with Steve and we can talk to you through it to make sure you never fail making Kaja Baby. Let's learn the real way to do it before you kind of mess with it and, and take it in, in. Let's do it, let's do it, come on. Mainly two things, cacio e pepe. What's cacio? In this case, pecorino romano. Is pecorino romano is so important, it's full of flavors. Some people don't like to have the strong flavor of pecorino, so you can mix it with parmigiano reggiano. I've been to Rome finding the best cacio e pepe and I've discovered this amazing small place um, where they do takeaway pastas and they do actually half parmigiano, half pecorino because clients and tourists were saying pecorino is too strong. So it could be a good thing for you to do if you find the pecorino being too strong. You mix it with parmigiano and pecorino, but the pecorino must be there. I do 100% pecorino because pecorino, I love it. This is what they okay. use traditionally in cacio e pepe. Pecorino is a sheep's milk cheese. Like its name suggests, <laughs> is a super fine grate of it. You could throw this in the blender, you could use a box grater. I'm gonna just use one of these sides, the ones where the where So important we're saying now, to finally grate it. Now, if you use, see you using a fine one, that's what you need. If you use the other one where you kind of shred it, that's probably when you're making the first mistake. When you fail cashew paper, it's because of this small detail. You need to have fine, fine grated pecorino cheese. So use that part. Or blend it or just buy it, grate it from the shop. But when you have like a little, um, like kind of shredded or small, like long lines of a pecorino or parmigiano, that's when I'm starting to worry about you and why it's not turning out the way it should turn out. And like, like the holes punch, punch outward, outward and you'll get a super fine grate like that. Super fine, that's the way. Well done, Stephen. I'll do the same and I've got always have pecorino in my house. I keep a store in the freezer and uh, it lasts for a long time in the freezer. And we're just gonna need like a cup or two of it. You could use the more the better. Parmesan if you don't have this, but pecorino is the way to go in my opinion. Or you can mix it. But me and him, we get along. If we have a lunch together, we're gonna make cacio e pepe for sure. And we use lots of pecorino. So we're just gonna put some pasta water in here and that's going to sort of create this like little... That's beautiful. That's a beautiful cream. That's a beautiful cream that will help you to make the cacio e pepe the right way. Oh, my baby son wants cacio e pepe. Alessandro, you're too small. You can't have cacio e pepe yet. You can't eat pasta yet, papa. You have to have milk. Pecorino Romano bomb that we throw in the pasta while it's cooking in the pasta water with peppercorns. The other main ingredient is these peppercorns. These are telecherry peppers. A lot, a lot. Now, yeah, people focus on, uh, I remember uh, Alex, uh, the, Alex, the cooking guy, and him are talking about the pepper. It is important to have pepper, 
But at the same time, I don't want you to stress too much. I don't want the pepper to turn you off, okay? It is important to find a very good pepper. Um, but whatever black pepper you find at the shop, it's fine, okay? Of course, higher quality pepper helps. But I will focus more on the pecorino. People, People might, might think, think they not pay too much attention to the peppercorns, but if you're, you're using, using the pre-ground pre bottles of peppercorn, you might as well just not make this. But it's true, and every single detail counts. Uh, but at the same time, I believe the pecorino is the main ingredient here. The pepper needs to be, yeah, peppercorn, and you kind of um, break on the, on the spot, uh, but you don't need to spend too much money for the peppercorn. If you can, you do it. Otherwise, get nice peppercorn from the supermarket. Into our pepper mill, and that's what we're gonna use to make this dish. Yeah, great. Pepper mill, put it in there, put it on top. So some pepper will be toasted, and some will be added fresh. Get your favorite brand of spaghetti. Hmm. What pasta bread is that? They have a lot of different sizes of spaghetti. So some are thinner, some are thicker. Yes, please say it. The thicker spaghetti is what we want, say it. Uh, you might want to go for the thicker one, I've just- Yes! 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 Got some regular spaghetti, and that's what I'm gonna- uh, You got the regular spaghetti, unfortunately, but maybe you from this during COVID, so I'm not saying anything, but the thick spaghetti, the way to go. I'm not gonna put oil, contrary to popular belief, there's no butter, there's no cream. There's no butter. No cream. This is all you're gonna need to make this pasta what it is. It's just how you put it together that's gonna make it beautiful. And just in case I need it. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> what is that? I've got my mouth cam, just so I can show you a different perspective. <laughs> that's mad. All right, so here we have. It is important to toast, um, very, very important. I usually, to make it faster, I actually crack the pepper in the pan and I, um, I just kind of get a toast, the, the cracked pepper. But this is a, a good way to do it. Right, okay, that's what he's doing. Okay, he's taking this to the next level. Wow, flavors that you get in there, it's incredible. Yeah, that's what I normally do. Um, instead of toasting the peppercorn, the straight, I go straight to that. So the spaghetti normally takes about 10 minutes, I would say. The flavors in the kitchen must be divine. So that pasta water now is gonna help to get the creamy, the creamy. It's, it's the second most important part, the pasta water and the amount you use in order to get the creamy country paper, okay? The cheese is very important, yes. The second most important part is that pasta water. So let's see how it's gonna do it. So now the pasta water gets the flavors. Um, what it's gonna do now is gonna add the spaghetti in there. I'm pretty sure it's gonna do that. So the spaghetti will get the flavors from the pepper, and at the same time, we'll, reduce, we, we'll release the starch. So, pecorino, lots of pecorino. I'm happy to see that. He's putting pasta water in there. You don't want this to be a runny sauce, even though I did watch Babish doing a no fail cashew pepper and his sauce was very runny and it worked, but that's cheating. To make a proper cashew pepper like this, you add a little bit of water. I think he's using um, like one uh, lado, lado, how you call it, lado? But it's not gonna be runny, I believe. Yeah, see, no, it's creamy. It's creamy, it's not runny, that's what you want. It's like a gelato. So you can put the pasta in there for the last, let's say you got three minutes left, two minutes left of cooking. Uh, you transfer the pasta into the pan. Maybe get a bigger pan if it helps, especially if you cook for more people. I use a 32 centimeters pan because I like to cook half a kilo pasta at a time for my family. So what's happening now, the starches are releasing into the water and you're making the water more creamy, if I can say that. So it's already 
a little bit creamy. When you add the cheese, it will be super creamy. Uh, we're about to show you. I say we because I feel like I'm in the kitchen with him. I like him. And it's important you don't dry the pasta. That's why he added more water to make sure it's nice and moist. Tossing, I love tossing, very important. Did you notice how the pasta was already kind of creamy? Look when it tosses, look, watch. Watch. See? That's a very important step you can't miss. Watch it again, watch. See that? You can see that there's a little bit of cream in there created by the pasta water. That's why the second important part is very important. Don't be scared to add more water. Now, turn off the heat. Important part. The heat is off. Wait about 20 seconds, 30 seconds before you add the cheese. So during those 20, 30 seconds, keep tossing, keep moving the pasta around, and uh, now you add the cheese. And look what's happening. Off the stove, of course. The stove is not on. Look how creamy it is. See? Do you see the amount of water in there? Do you see the amount of water that is still in the pan? Look what it does. Can you see the drops? That's the water that is helping. The water will get absorbed by the, the pasta, okay? But the cheese will stay there, the cream will stay there. So if you have a little bit more water, don't be scared because your pasta will absorb it. Not a huge amount of water. You don't want to have pasta swimming in water, but if you have, let's say, a quarter of a, a mug of, of water in there, it's fine. Half a mug, okay, it depends how much pasta you use, but you want that much water to allow you to uh, spread the cheese all over the spaghetti. I hope it makes sense. It is hard to explain, it is hard to explain. It is the thing I never understood about Steven. Why does he put the food on the chopping board? Um, I never asked the question. I'm asking now, but maybe you know, guys. Maybe Steven can reply and tell me why. It looks nice. So maybe it's, it's a looking thing because it does look nice to take a photo and the video on the chopping board. Yeah, nice. Nice, no, beautiful. Look how creamy it is. Say it's creamy. You don't want strings, you want creamy. Creamy, creamy, creamy. Nah, nice. Wow. Super creamy. Oh, he's eating on the chopping board. Okay. That's interesting. That's new. That's absolutely delicious. Really delicious. I could have afforded to add more pasta water. See? is not scared of pasta water. Don't be scared of pasta water. Pasta water is your best friend for this recipe. Same for carbonara, same for pasta da grigia. Pasta water, for many, many pastas, for most of pastas, you need the pasta water. And don't be scared because the, the, the pasta, the actual pasta, absorbs the water. And again, do not go crazy. They use a crazy amount of water, but the water, will disappear because it gets absorbed by the pasta. The pasta is very thirsty. Before I plated, after sitting and cooling down with the photo shoot, which takes a few minutes. It does take time, it does take time. So if it's not creamy anymore, it's not because of him. He did a great job. It's because uh, he needs to take photos for you guys. So you can watch the videos and look at the photo and yeah. It tightens, it tightens up, up and it's not as creamy, which you can see right here. But you're not gonna make a photo shoot, so if you, if you no. can nail the creaminess in the pan, you're likely going to nail it in the plate as well. Just don't do photo shoots like I do. But, but using those whole peppercorns, toasting them. He actually ate the whole thing. There's nothing left. Really brings out this aroma and this flavor mixed with that pecorino cheese. That is what makes a cacio pepe so delicious. He made a fantastic job. <clears throat> Brilliant. Look, he's eating it so much. He loves it. Great guy. Great channel. Um, if you've never seen this channel before, make sure you go and see it and subscribe. Um, I hope I'll get to meet him one day um, and cook with him. He's, he's fun. I mean, how bad could it be? You're going to have delicious... Must have been great. Just catch your pepe. Yeah, we get along on this and I like it. So these are the channels you need to follow. Genuine people who love what they do, who have passion, and they want to show you the right way. 
He's American, and he did cacio e pepe better than a Roman. He did very well. He even focused on the peppercorn so much. You know, crazy. I love it. Do you understand? Details make everything better in life. Details, small details, make your life better. And this is a proof. It's proving that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed. I feel like having a cashew pepe right now, to be honest. So I think it's cashew pepe day in my house. <laughs> Please let me know what you think. Please send me more videos to react to. Not just the bad ones, or even good ones like this one. Please let me know, okay? Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Play video recipe. Actually, go and watch my cashew pepe. The latest cashew pepe. Actually, I have a very nice cashew pepe video, which is the gnocchi cashew pepe. You will love it. Or you can watch my latest cashew pepe. It's very creamy. It's very, very creamy. Creamy at its best. Oh, the ingredients make love together. They make love in a beautiful cream. You will love it. Ciao.